Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My brother sabotaged my life for years to win dad's favor. Now they want me back, but I'm not ready to forgive. I, male, 20, live with my parents and my brother Mike, 23, male. We live in a fairly decent home in a good neighborhood. Growing up, my father had an old school approach to raising children. As kids, both I and my brother were subjected to reprimands and if the situation necessitated beatings. He considered himself the best father and role model for his kids. But my mother is a lovely woman with a smile that never fades from her face. Talking to her after a stressful day always cheers me up. Though we were subjected to the same form of punishment as kids, he grew closer to our father while I found it difficult to maintain emotional intimacy with him. But mind you, I love my father with all my heart. It was just that I found it difficult to express it. Mike and I were very different. We had a love-hate relationship ever since childhood. It has not changed ever since. Mike was the golden child. In school, he was good at both sports and academics. I, on the other hand, was your average kid. I had severe asthma during my school days, so I had no interest in sports. I had a thin body frame. Nevertheless, I loved myself. On the outside, Mike always played the protective, loving elder brother to me. But this was not true. Ever since we were kids, he found a weird pleasure in framing me as the troubled kid in front of our parents. My father made a game of sorts before Christmas in 2008. He told us that he would keep scores on who was more mischievous till Christmas. For the one with the lowest score, Santa would get whatever he wished for as a Christmas gift. The mischievous one would get a sack of coal. Mike was ready to commit anything to be the good kid for Christmas. A series of incidents followed where my brother did something naughty and successfully framed it on me. First was a knee injury that he got during our daily cycle rides. He fell from the cycle and had a small wound on his knee. He was all right and continued riding our cycles. But as soon as he reached home, he started crying. He told our parents that I was trying to speed up and the injury happened when he tried to get to me on his cycle. He wanted to ask me to slow down. I was dumbfounded. But his crookedness came about when dad started to shout at me. He requested dad to forgive me and made me promise him that it won't happen again. This was always the pattern of how he framed me. In the end, he always emerged as my savior. I later realized that this was his way of earning my father's trust. At times I used to cry and tell my mother about my innocence, though she never saw it as anything above sibling rivalry, I was happy that she believed me. All these years later the situation at home is the same. Mike spent most of his time with our father bonding over boxing, baseball, weightlifting. Dad rarely talked to me. I'm more attached to our mum. By the time he was in his late teenage years we got on with our own lives. There wasn't much of a problem specifically because there wasn't much interaction. But two years back, I started dating a girl. As I mentioned already, I'm an introvert. She also prioritized her privacy. So we were dating in private. Only a few close friends knew about this. Though my brother had a popular run in school, he never had any meaningful relationships. He always wanted to fall in love with someone, but he downplayed his desires by saying that girls are a major pain in the ass and dating distracts you from your goals. I and my girlfriend had a fairly decent run. We had similar interests and the same friend group. It was fun. One day Mike came to my room and started ranting about random stuff. This was odd. We rarely talked for the past couple of years and here he was trying to have a full-blown conversation, but I played along. The topic slowly moved to women and dating and he asked me straight if I was dating someone. He had heard that I was dating a very gorgeous girl, his description, from a mutual friend and did not believe it. I told him the truth. He pushed me to show photos. After much persuasion I gave in and showed a few selfies that we had. His face changed pale. I could sense that he couldn't digest the fact that someone found me attractive. That ended there. Later, a mutual friend revealed to me that Mike had forced him to share the socials of my girlfriend with him, just to get to know my little brother's girlfriend better. But I left it at that. My girlfriend had decided to move to another state to continue her education. We decided that it was not practical to continue dating long distance and ended it mutually. Around this time I heard that my brother was going out with a girl. For the first couple of months, I thought he was making this up because nobody saw her and nobody knew who she was. But whenever Mike talked about this girl, he was head over heels for her. He asked me about my girlfriend. When I told him that we broke up, he told me that he was surprised I was alive. If it was him, he would have killed himself after a heartbreak. That is what love meant to him. He sounded hypocritical as this was the guy who advised me just a few months ago that women distracted men from their career goals. But I hated to engage in a debate with him and just nodded to everything he said. On a Friday, a message popped up on our family group chat. It was a selfie of Mike with his girlfriend. 
He said that dad had agreed to invite his girlfriend in for dinner the next day and would appreciate it if we were all present. I knew that the message was intended for me. I had no interest as I was aware of all the awkward and cringe conversations my brother would initiate. But on the brighter side, I saw that my father was being more liberal now. If five years back someone told me that my father would invite one of his son's girlfriends for dinner, I would have called them delusional. But that was happening now. So I decided to stay at home to witness it. Mike was over-enthusiastic and over-excited throughout the next day. He had a smirk on his face every time he looked at me. But I did not give it much heed. But I was anxious about how the dinner would go. My brother came home with his girlfriend later in the evening. Her name was Kathy. He introduced her to mom and dad first. Okay, a little bit about how I look. Though I have the body of a 19-year-old, my face still has baby features. But I hate it when people infantilize me. This is exactly what she did when I greeted her. She screamed out loud that I was such a cute baby and how old I was. Both dad and Mike laughed out loud at her pampering tone, but I felt disgusted. The moment she was in our home, she behaved in a very strange way. She commented on everything from the wall decor to the clothes I was wearing, but I noticed that she tried to please our father. There were a few paintings at our house that dad bought a few years ago. She was keen to appreciate them. When we sat down for dinner, she again ranted about the amount of food that I was taking in. She told the family that she was a dietitian and commented that if I had to man up like my brother and father, I had to eat more than that. She was constantly complimenting Mike the whole while. But it is when she started to target mom that I felt enraged. She commented about how my mom should take up new hobbies and come to community meetings like her mom. A thing to be noted here is that my mom has better educational qualifications than my dad, but she decided to stay at home to raise us. Though she never showed it outside, it is something that she regretted. So now Kathy was poking my mom at her sensitive spot. Suddenly my brother interrupted and said, you should start advising Jake. Perhaps then he will start working to find his own weed money instead of stealing from his brother. My head went dizzy immediately after hearing this. I looked at my dad. He was staring at me with his eyes that looked like craters from hell. My immediate response was to sheepishly laugh it off and then stare at my phone. I could hear Kathy in the background enlisting the impact of weed use. Now, to be honest, I don't have an opinion on whether weed is good or not, but one thing I'm sure about is that I have never spent a single dime on weed. In the next few minutes I could hear my father shouting at me because he took my brother's word as always. He was not even ready to hear a single word from my side. He wanted to raid my home. To add insult to my injury, my brother asked my father not to be too harsh on me as my girlfriend has recently left me. This caught my mom's attention. I used to share every incident in my life with my mom. She was surprised that I didn't share this with her. My father used this to further state that I could keep secrets from them, and my weed usage was one such secret. My father felt his integrity as a good father was being questioned. He felt ashamed in front of Kathy. She played along with Mike to suggest that there are facilities that treat addicts nowadays. I was sweating gallons and my clothes were blotched in perspiration. Verbal diarrhea by my dad reached an end when he demanded an inspection of my room. I said it was impossible to search my room. I have no idea why I got all the courage to resist my father's advancements, but I fought tooth and nail to resist him from searching my room. There was no reason for that, but I did. That's when he declared that either I can live at his house, adhering to his rules, or I can leave. His ultimatum knocked open something in me, some strange energy. I stood my ground and narrated all the injustices that I have suffered under him. He protested initially but then sat down to listen. I narrated events that I never thought I remembered or impacted me. I told him how much I felt left out while he was teaching Mike to box, weightlift, or play baseball. He once told me I was less of a man if I couldn't stand up to my bullies in school. Initially, I could hear my mom sobbing, but by the time I finished I could see that my father was in tears. I was determined to leave but before I stormed out I stood on the doorway and told Mike, I thought you would stop texting my ex once you got a girlfriend. My phone is, since then, being stormed with messages and texts from my brother and mother. No phone calls yet from the father. I had decided to go in low contact with my brother and father for the sake of my mental peace. Apparently Mike wanted to propose to Kathy and already bought a ring. She playfully told him that she would say yes if Mike was cunning enough to kick me out of the house on their first family dinner together. She called it a prank or ice-breaking session, but I could only see trauma in it. But my last rant about my childhood was so believable that Kathy believed the lie about Mike texting my ex-girlfriend. Only if I deny it will she talk to Mike again. I attended my mother's call who said that whether or not I clarified the thing with Mike and Kathy, I should call my dad and apologize to him. He has been so depressed ever since I left. Some mutual friends have guilt tripped me into thinking that I ruined the relationship. But what about my mental peace and years of being neglected? 
For years, I have taken initiative to fix everything, but now I'm tired. Am I the a-hole for not taking initiative to get back to my father and brother after everything they did to me? I stayed at my friend's place for a few days and then moved to a tiny shared apartment within the city that is affordable for me now. Today, Mike called. We were silent on the phone for a while. I was adamant that he should make the conversation. He told me that Dad asked him not to step into his house until he brought me back with him. He was sobbing. My heart went out to him, but I made sure that I would take decisions only using my brain. He asked me whether I could talk to Kathy. I mentioned that I could. He requested I go home, but when I asked if he genuinely wants me there or wants me there so that he can return home as well, he fell silent. My answer was there. After the call, I contacted Kathy to explain what happened, but she demanded that she wanted to talk to my ex-girlfriend to confirm. I denied this. Mom calls me every day. My dad always considered him one of the best dads, and he is shattered to learn how much he went wrong. But I was stern that I will return only after dad initiates a conversation with me. So after the end of the first month, I started taking therapy. Therapy has been very helpful for me to come out of the shadow of my brother and father. Yesterday on my walk back from work, I saw a familiar figure waiting for me near my apartment. It was my father. I felt a chill run down my spine. I invited him to my room. We didn't talk much about the incident at all. He initially said that my mom misses me. At some point, he added that he missed me as well. I started crying at that point. I sat close to him, and he put his arms around my shoulder. I don't think my father had ever done that before. I was healing inside. He cheered me after I finished sobbing. We sat there for some time chatting. He didn't force me to come home but reminded me that I was welcome there any time. It took me 20 years to feel the warmth and love of my father. I'm yet to call my brother because I ruined his relationship, but I'm planning to call him soon so that we can have dinner together at home after many months. NTA, it took you years to acknowledge the problems that you were facing. The subtle things that may look like sibling rivalry can leave a lasting impact on the minds of people. Minor incidents in your childhood can have terrible long-term impacts on your adult life. It is important to address such issues. You needed to get closure from your father and brother. It might not have helped if you went behind them to seek an apology. It's best for you to wait. NTA. But I feel like it was unfair towards your ex-girlfriend to drag her name into your family issues. For context, I'm 29 male. My wife's 28 female. Family are wealthy. They also live in a cheap area, so their money tends to go even further than it would elsewhere. Wife and brother-in-law. 23, male, went to elite private schools, had three tropical holidays of luxury cars, bought for them at 18, etc. My wife and I live in a major city, whereas brother-in-law lives rurally, about 15 minutes from his parents. Brother-in-law is a small business owner. I gather he's decent at what he does, but he has been heavily bankrolled and supported by my father-in-law, who is retired, but works four to five days a week with brother-in-law for no compensation. Father-in-law gives brother-in-law his nominal share in the company outright. I've recently started a side business, which is doing quite well. I've got enough extra cash to treat my wife and I, and also look at some investment opportunities. This came up at a recently and brother-in-law suggested buying property to rent out. I had looked into this already, but ruled it out. Partly because the financial upside in our part of the world, current economic climate, didn't look to be great for the effort involved and partly because I'm not morally comfortable with the idea of being a landlord. I'm not extreme in this view and think there is probably a place for private landlords, but it's something I'd avoid putting upon myself when I have better alternatives available. I explained all this, and brother-in-law essentially blew up. I had no idea, but apparently his whole end goal is to make enough money to buy enough rental properties to make that his full-time occupation. I said again that this was good for him if he could make it work. No skin off my nose, but he kept on his rant about how I was a privileged elite, city living, university degree, and an idiot for not properly taking care of his sister. I explained that we're more than comfortable as we are, and that my wife is both perfectly capable of looking after herself, and also makes all of these decisions jointly with me. At some point, I must have hit a nerve because he kept on with his tirade and started down the track of knowing the value of money, and how my wife and I were morons for not going into the property. Admittedly, I snapped at that, and this is where I might be T.A. I told him that he has no idea of the value of money, that he's the product of immense privilege, has never paid his own bills, and only has a business because of daddy's input and bankrolling. At this point, my mother-in-law and father-in-law called time on dinner and suggested that we leave. We've never butted heads like that as a family before, so I think it came as a shock to everyone. My wife gets my point and is glad I stood up for her autonomy, but wishes I'd tried harder to keep the peace. She also says I pressed on brother-in-law's insecurities. 
Being a self-made businessman is his whole identity. So, a uh, I T A N T A brother-in-law kept pushing after you clearly wanted to drop the subject. Not only that, but by criticizing your lifestyle, he opened up his own for criticism in return. It sounds like the family is used to putting up with brother-in-law and his charades, and don't expect people to stand up for themselves against him, which would track based on him being the golden child. NTA. What's with all these wealthy babies claiming they're self-made? Are you actually self-made if your parents front you all the cash for your business? I don't think brother-in-law will ever change. In the future, if you have to be around him, I might just have a few lines ready to diffuse things. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Or better when he says something nasty. What do you mean by that? Or, or just repeat back what he says. I hear that you are saying I am bad with money and a bad husband to your sister. Is that what you are saying? In best case scenario, he stops talking to you like that. Slightly less good scenario. He actually admits in front of everyone that he is insulting you, and you have ample reason to not be around him anymore. Next story, my older brother, 29M, has always has it easy and got way too comfortable in his situation. He was always the favorite compared to myself, 25F, and my sister, 32F, the handsome kid, popular in high school and with girls, that kind of thing. It seems during college he actually found a long-term girlfriend, and when he finished up school he married her. It's been six years since they married, and he hasn't done anything. His wife has always been a driven, successful woman. How he got her to marry him I will never know. Since they married he has not worked, they don't have kids, he barely does anything around the house. He works, he outright admits it, he has gained a considerable amount of weight. Developed a crippling porn addiction, he's way too open to admitting it, it's awkward, and spends his days with that or gaming. My brother got too used to gliding through life because he was always the pretty and fun guy. Now that he had his dream girl who provided for the house and brought in a ton of money without him having to lift a finger, he stopped trying to contribute at all. His wife works and does all the chores. They're roommates. I've always liked her and we hang out quiet a bit. About four years ago she started doing anything she could to fix the relationship, since of course my brother manipulated her into believing it was her fault. She tried to set up therapy appointments, go to the gym more, encouraging him to go to the gym, tried intimacy more often, cut back hours to spend more time with him, bought him expensive things. She spent years trying everything she could to fix things believing it was her fault. He didn't try a single thing, outright rejected therapy, mocked her weight even though she practically has a supermodel figure, insisted his weight was fine, refused to lift a finger for the house, and kept blaming her for the way things were, saying if she tried more he would be better. Three years later she was still coming home to him watching porn in a dirty house while she cooked and cleaned. Three years of her working herself to the bone only to come home to an emotionally abusive husband who beat her down while she tried everything to fix her marriage. Last year she decided she wanted a divorce. My brother became hostile and promised to drag it out and take as much as he could, as apparently that have a prenuptial that he somehow got her to agree to. I know very little about divorce laws, especially in our state, except for that we don't live in an at-fault state. But according to her, if she tried to go forward with it, and he got petty, he could take a lot from her. Everything they have is because of her. She decided against divorce. She was trapped with him and accepted it against mine and others' objections. I guess by then she was over his bullshit. She slowly spent more time away from home and claimed she was working extra hours. She didn't bother him about therapy or his weight. She actually pretty much stopped interacting with him. She didn't cook anymore. She didn't clean anymore. It didn't take long for her to admit to me she was spending quite a bit of time with other guys and girls. She never brought any home but was staying out late quite a bit. My brother didn't notice, and I didn't care. For years she was a beaten down shell trying to appease someone who didn't respect her. Now she was lively, happy, outgoing, and everything she used to be. I'm not happy about her feeling stuck with my brother or the concept of cheating in general, but apparently it works for her. It didn't take long for him to find out. Apparently there were a lot of people she was meeting. He was livid, demanded she stop, and threatened divorce. She didn't care. She told him he knew where the door was. It was her home solely and she was allowing him to stay out of obligation. She told him she would gladly stop if he agreed to a fair divorce without him fighting it, and that she was showing decency as a provider and a wife by not bringing her partners into their home. The thing is, even if my brother got his way in the divorce, he knew that money would not last at all, and without any work experience and the shape he was currently in, he would be screwed. He was an overweight slacker who barely had anything to his name. Prenup or not now, he was stuck. And so that's how it's been for nearly a year. She barely comes home anymore, and the list of APS has only gotten longer. My brother has tried going to the gym more, picking up a part-time job, cooking, 
but it's too late. He had years to fix this and only chose to change when his back was against the wall. He's been begging me to make her stop and to give their marriage a shot. I told him he's a moron who only has himself to blame. If you beat down a patient and caring person long enough, they will absolutely mess you up. He needs to just accept a divorce in her favor and learn from this. He didn't like my answer at all and hasn't talked to me for a couple weeks. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.